All right. What's up, everybody? There he is. Yo. How's it going? It's going well, Alex. How about yourself? I am here. I made up to the core hall today, so we're doing good. I see you're in that fancy boardroom. I know, right? I got my light and everything, so we're good. Um, you want us to get right to it? Let's do it. All right. Does, uh, why don't you tell everybody who's here a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess I'll kind of uh, work from the beginning of time forward. <laughs> um, I'm originally from upstate New York. Um, went to college at Syracuse University and then the University of Florida after that. And then became a band director. Um, taught uh, for essentially 10 years or so um, in the state of Florida. Taught one year in Texas. Um, and then a couple of years ago, I hung up my band director hat to pursue my uh, freelance career as a composer arranger. So that's what I'm doing these days uh, for my nine to five. And uh, when I'm not doing that, you know, I like to walk, golf, be outside and, uh, you know, just live in life, dude. I got you. Was that your original plan to uh, become a composer or um, what was the original plan going into college? You know, when I started my undergrad, I was actually a dual major. Um, so I was music ed and music composition. Um, and that lasted for about a year and a half or so. I was, I was just your stereotypical, like awful undergrad. It took me until like junior year to like figure out how to college. Um, That's where I'm at. Yeah. And by that point, like, thankfully there was enough time to, to save myself, but, um, no, I mean, I just, just to be honest, I, you know, I couldn't handle the, the dual major thing at that time. Um, so I ended up just dropping the comp major. I, I took I took lessons and things, um, but just kind of refocused into uh, music ed um, and just, just kind of ran with it from there. Now, I, I've always aspired to compose and arrange. It's always been, you know, a, a hobby of mine since I was really young. Um, but it was always something that, like, was bubbling under the surface, if that makes sense, even after I committed to being a full-time band director and, and, you know, those eight years that I was in the classroom uh, was something that I was always doing. Um, and if there was, you know, if there was one thing that was pulling me away from music education, it was always composition and arranging. So, um, you know, it started off as the plan and then I, I took a turn and then somehow I found myself back on, on that plan. I mean, that's usually how life goes anyways. You start one thing and then you like end up on another path. Um, was there any reason as to why you ended up hanging up the band director and switching to composing a couple of years ago? Or is it kind of just what happened? Yeah, I mean, there's no specific oh. reason why um, other than, Are you, am I still here? Yeah, am I still here? Yeah, are you like, right, I don't know if it was me or you. I don't know, I got core hall Wi-Fi here, so it's spotty. Oh, okay. Um, you asked me a question and I forget what it was. Um, I was just asking if there was any reason as to why you kind of switched over to composing a couple of years ago and kind of hung up the band director um, scene. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, well, it's kind of like I said, composition's always been my passion, right? Um, not that I, I didn't or don't have a passion for teaching. I still love doing that. Um, so, there, no, there wasn't like an event that made me stop teaching formally, right? Um, but it just so happened that um, in my last year of teaching, uh, my wife um, got her PhD and she became a college professor. So we needed to move um, when she landed her first college job. So I sort of used that as my out, if you will, use that as my excuse to, to, to see if I could do the composing arranging thing full time. And, you know, it was touch and go for probably the first six to eight months or so, but I eventually figured it out and got in a groove and the rest is history. How's that been going for you then? It's awesome. It's great. I mean, it's tough because it's like everything you hear about working from home. You have to set schedules and be real, like, diligent with your time because you are at home. But I'm I'm fairly routine oriented. Thank you, drum corps. Um, so, yeah, I just I, I set a plan and I, I work the plan. So I, I, I do all right. I got gotcha. you. Well, before I ask about, like, what what's in store for the season, um, what, about, what about your drum corps history? Um, marching experience, uh, staff experience and all that stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, so I marched uh, for five years with an all-age drum and bugle corps um, in the 
Drum Corps Associates, the DCA circuit. Back then, it was still called Senior Corps, um, and eventually changed to just all age. Um, and I, you know, I was probably right on the, the threshold of like, so Senior Corps, all age Corps used to have a lot more all age people, meaning like, you know, middle aged people and, and, and older. Um, nowadays, at least from what I understand, it's, it's mainly, mainly young people with some older adults mixed in. But um, anyways, I'm going on a tangent. Um, so I marched with the Syracuse Brigadiers, um, a group that's no longer around. Uh, they were in my hometown there in Syracuse, New York. So marched with them um, my last couple of years of high school and first couple of years of college, played mellophone. We were still playing G bugles at the time. So it was sweet uh, because anyone who's ever played a G mellophone knows that they're just they're they're awesome, and we were playing um, we were playing Wayne Downey horn books, so the mellow parts were like really sick. So, uh, did that for five summers. Um, of course, that was weekends, right? So it wasn't like DCI where you're going every day. We would have camps and then meet every weekend in the spring and summer. Um, from there, so that would have been 2001 to 2005 was my last um, season with the Brigadiers. And then in 2006, I auditioned um, and got a spot with the Boston Crusaders. Um, Tommy Santino, who has worked with um, Boston um, and the Colts, and was also working with the Brigadiers at the time, and also Tom Lazat, um, you know, they were at the time working with, with Boston Crusaders. So um, I kind of followed them, if you will, over, over to, to BAC, marched this season trumpet, and then was um, drum major my second year. And then I took a year off to transition into my master's um, and then taught one summer on the visual staff with the Blue Stars. That would have been 2010, no, 2009. Um, yeah, so Marshall 607 Boston took 08 off, taught 09 Blue Stars, uh, visual caption head, core director at the time, um, had come from Boston, so I kind of followed them over there. And then I got and then I got into band directing full time and, and I didn't touch, look or sniff drum corps for almost 10 years um, until I got a call from uh, this guy, Chad Miller in 2018. And he was like, hey, I need a trumpet tech for like a couple days or a week or two. Um, so, you know, came out, taught a little bit in 18, taught a little bit more in 19, was going to teach and arrange a lot more in, in 2020. Um, but uh, here we are. And you and Chad Miller, just so everybody knows, are not related. No, not 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 in a literal sense. No. <laughs> um, how's it been arranging for uh, a drum corps, a world class drum corps? How's that been? Uh, well, the short answer is 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 I don't know because we started <laughs> we started in in, in, in two thousand twenty um, putting the show together, and we had a, a kick ass show, uh, which which we'll probably be seeing again sometime soon hopefully but um you know the, the process has been great and the, the rest of the design team and the educational staff that we've been working alongside of for now almost two years it's it's just been a blessing yeah. um you know we got to hear a little bit live at those camps in 2020 and that was yeah it was like a dream come true because i've i've been wanting to arrange for drum corps my whole life so to, the first time hearing a world-class drum corps play my notes was was pretty awesome so um, it's going well, and I'm just blessed again to to work with just some of the best people in the activity, um, you know, both on the educational staff design team and, and the admin. Just, you know, when you're surrounded by good people, it's easy to do your job. Yeah. Did you ever see yourself composing for a world class drum corps? Yeah. I, I, I remember the day, not the exact day, but I remember the, the scenario I was in my high school, band, um, high school band room, and I said to my band directors, like, hey, like, I want to do this. How do I do this? And we had, you know, like a quick 10, 15 minute conversation at the end of a period about it. And, and yeah, it's kind of been something I've, I've wanted to do my whole life. So very, very fortunate, for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I was so excited. I just remember, you know, because I was supposed to march last season too. So those few camps we had for the 2020 season, um, that music was, it was, it was fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah. A little sad to be able to, you know, play that, but again, it was great. Yeah. Um, so what are you looking forward to this season? What, what, what is everybody going to be? Um, and I'm buffering again. There you are. Am I, am I back? Yeah, you're back. Man, this Wi-Fi, I'm going to have to tell Vicky um, the new <laughs> Wi-Fi. Um, 
But just basically what we got in store for the Colts this season, you know, uh, horn line, music, what are we looking at? Uh, well, we're, we're looking at a lot, right? Because we, we haven't drum cord in two years. Nobody, nobody really has. So um, I'm, ex I'm just excited, as I'm sure everyone else is, just to get, get the boys back together, so to speak, and, um, uh, and just, just do it. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've got a really cool show. It's, it's a little bit shorter, not much. Um, just to facilitate, you know, the, the shorter season kind of thing. Um, but what, I, what I'm most excited for is just for us all to get back together with brass, percussion, color guard, staff, admin. Um, because, you know, it, it, drum corps is a special thing and it's, it's, it's a unique thing. Um, and it, it, it kind of keeps us coming back year after year. And it was a big void in our lives. So to have it back is, is I'm just, I'm, I'm over the moon about it. Um, and our show is going to be great. Um, you know, it's going to be a unique learning process and teaching experience, right? Having taken two summers off and just a different scenario. But I have no doubt that, um, you know, by the end of the season, that this is going to be a really special show. Uh, we had to write this show a little bit different, um, just from the sense of, uh, we, we kind of took an approach where things are a little bit more sectionalized um, than they would be. I mean, there's still plenty of big drum corps moments right, where the whole core is doing the thing. But we thought about, you know, how, how, can we, how can we best use our rehearsal time and be as efficient as possible? So, you know, there might be a 20, 30 second of the show where it's like, you know, more of a percussion thing and then more of a brass thing and then more of a front ensemble thing. And again, you see that in any drum core show any year, but we really thought about how we could use that strategy this year. And um, I guess the last thing without spoiling too much is we're, we're using some, some kind of cool, um, sort of unique brass instruments that we don't typically use this year and just some small brass ensemble features that, that should be pretty hip. So keep yeah. your eyes out for that. That's cool. Anything on the, um, totally just lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, music selection. Um, what do we got this year? Um, well, we, um, so I don't know if we've released the titles of the tunes yet, so I certainly don't want to spoil that. But I will say, um, have we? Have we not? I don't remember. I don't think I we don't, have. It's, I, it might be in that release video. I don't know either. Yeah, and I, I, so I want to keep my job, Alex. So <laughs> I want to keep mine too, don't worry. I will say everything we're playing is um, popular um, in that, uh, you know, maybe, you know, not every fan will know every – source music uh, source selection that we're using i'm sure but a lot of people will most all of the time and there's a little bit of there's a little something for everybody in this show we have a cool mix of genres um we're we're kind of using all of the musical color palette uh, not all of it but a lot of it um mixing colors and styles and genres and trying to make uh, a colorful connection with our audience i gotcha um so at the end of this, I want to do a uh, rapid fire question. Um, uh -oh. and we'll, and this then we'll is like a, a pot, like a, like a, like, like the ologies podcast. You ever watch that? I have not. Okay. Well, they do that. So. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. But I got, I got one question, like real question left. We'll do the fast fire and then see what people are saying in the um, comments here. So the last question is just, if you could give advice to any current future, just um, any drum corps member in general, what advice would you give them in regards to doing drum corps? Uh, I, I would have two bits of advice that kind of came to my mind while you were saying that. And one is March when you can, if you can, um, you know, so sometimes you can't, you know, and that's, I'm not saying that, that that's not warranted because sometimes it's just not possible. Um, but if you're like ever on the fence where like you could do it, but you're not sure that you want to do it, just do it because you're, it's, it's an invaluable experience. Um, it changed my life. Um, I'm literally uh, standing here today because of drum corps and it's, it's just something that I think everyone can benefit from. Um, and then the other bit of advice I would say is it's okay to march in a drum corps and not be the best. And it's okay to march in a drum corps that isn't the best, meaning, you, you know, you don't have to start marching drum corps in a top three, top five, even a top 12 drum and bugle corps. Um, and I think 
you know, sometimes social media does us a disservice because the drum corps we see most often on social media are those highest achieving, highest placing drum corps. That's just, and that's, that's just the nature of, of, of capitalism, right? It's just what we focus on. We focus on the best, the most successful, and that's certainly not taking away from any of those groups. But I think a lot of times the young people that I talk to, you know, might audition for their, for their dream core, right? And most of the time, you know, especially if you're young and don't have a ton of experience, you're probably not going to make your dream core that first audition. You might not make your, your, your top two or top three preference drum core in your second or third audition. You know, there's open class drum cores. That, and, and here's the thing is like every drum core has something to offer. There are so many talented educators out there. There's so many drum cores offering great experiences. So I would just say, and I'm talking a lot, but don't be afraid to check drum cores out. You know, go, go to as many audition camps as you feasibly can and just meet as many people because in, in the end, it's really about just learning and growing. And you can and the, do that. And the, you can do that, that yeah. and the family and the people that you meet and stuff like that. I mean, like we said last time, whenever we had our Instagram live, where it was reversed here, um, I auditioned somewhere else. I ended up here and now look, I've marched three seasons and now I'm doing social media. So I definitely feel you on that part. Just, just do it. Just whoever's watching this, just march. Just do it. You'll find wherever um, makes you happy. Okay. So rapid fire questions. Go. First, first one is a uh, crunchy or creamy. Crunchy, one hundred percent crunchy. I'll eat creamy, but crunchy. Especially on those hot summer days, you need a little bit of texture to it, so it's not soupy. Yeah, it's just I, it's got to be crunchy. It's got to have that that texture, man. Yeah. Uh, favorite cook truck meal. Uh, I don't, I don't know that I have one, but it's, and maybe this is a cop out, but I just love my PB and J people that know me know, like, I'll just eat PB and J because I love it. It's, it's got the food groups. It's fast. It's easy. You don't have to wait in line as long. Um, although I will say, I love when we have, um, at Colts specifically, when we have those corn dogs, a little corn dog, hot sauce, really good. I, I like the, the, uh, yeah, the Dorito casserole, um, you know, that one's really good. And yeah, I, feel house, like, I feel like we should give a shout out to Egg Bake too, because I actually enjoy Egg Bake. <laughs> I'm waiting for everybody to start getting triggered coming in the comments now with Egg Bake. Nothing yet. <laughs> um, back of the bus or front of the bus? <sighs> oh, man, I'm Switzerland. Because I, I would have to say front of the bus only because like, when it's time to get off the bus, let's get off the bus. Brass staff, we're like in the first, like, I don't know, third of the bus. And we like that. We like to get right off, um, especially on a member bus, you know, where there's 50 all on there. Back of the bus is where the hang is. I get it. But, you know, it can be hard to get off the bus in a timely manner if you're in the back. Yeah, well, like, uh, when you get to a housing site, too, you don't, you don't, you know, people are sleeping, waking up. But if you're on the front of the bus, you can just get right off, go find your spot on the floor. And that's more floor time. The AC tends to be a little better towards the front of the bus, in my experience, too. So. Exactly. Um, favorite drum corps show, like, ever? Um, can I, can I, can I say two? Yeah. Okay, I would say um, Blue Devils, My Spanish Heart um and madison scouts jesus christ superstar those are like the two shows that like when i first discovered drum corps i'd like play on loop and i've probably listened to those shows thousands of times um i even like i'm getting goosebumps now thinking about parts of those shows like that first hit in jesus christ superstar and yeah those those two shows are 10 out of 10 for me every time all right and then the to kind of uh follow that up favorite cult show um, I'm probably going to say, uh, I really like, I really like some of the musical moments in 2018. I know it's a super recent show and I'll be completely transparent. My, my like history and knowledge of cult show doesn't go very, very deep. Um, but it's funny because I've been, man I was managing the social media, obviously before you, Alex, and going through some of the clips and kind of learning, um, some of the past shows, like there's a lot of good stuff out there, but. I say 18, again, because some of those musical moments were really impactful. Um, but also that was, I think, it was my first summer with the Colts. So I think that one is really special to me also because of that. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm going to stick with that and say 2018. 
Yeah, no, that was a fun show. I enjoyed that on uh, my end, marching it. Yeah. You know, being a big shot. But um, <laughs> all right, let's see what we got in the comments here. Um, Vicky is attending. She loves egg bake. Got a little egg bake reacts. Um, there was someone earlier who was asking about Q&A after the interview. But I don't know if they're still here. Uh, band boss, what is your favorite drum corps smell? Uh, f uh, fresh mown grass on the rehearsal field. I mean, I, I would prefer a nice astroturf field, right, in a big high stadium. But there's nothing like when you get to, and I'm not talking about like any grass field, right? I'm talking about like when you get a pristine grass stadium that's like well manicured and it's just been cut and like fresh paint and the grass is like just high, that smell, yeah. You guys can keep questions coming in, by the way. I'm going to keep scrolling, but we'll try to get to them. Um, diesel fuel is also incredible. Um, when I think of diesel yes. fuel, I think specifically of the San Antonio lot. That's like smell connection for me. That was my immediate thought of like walking between the hot buses and, yeah, the smell of diesel. Um. And if, if CJ, I don't think CJ's, yeah, diesel fuel. Uh, can you see that last question here? It says, FCO, any advice for getting staff positions? Yeah, my first bit of advice on that is is to march. Um, march, march drum corps. Um, meet people. Uh, be a good member. <laughs> be, you know what I mean? Like, be receptive and, and be a be a positive team player and contribute to the team um, and find the the core with the teachers that you admire um, and when I say admire like you admire how they teach and their philosophy um, you don't not just you don't admire their their rings or their medals or their placements but you actually like get to know them and like you, you vibe with them as a person and you like how they teach um and and talk to them and, and get mentored by them but yeah the first bit of advice on on uh, teaching any any you know type of ensemble with a strum corps marching band indoor is is march and just listen you know right? talk less and listen and just absorb be a sponge exactly let's see any more you guys can keep them coming in if you're here we've got currently nine viewers but there's got to be someone with questions uh, the nine funny. best viewers on Instagram right now. Exactly. You guys are the OGs. A shout out to y'all. Um, there was one earlier from Columbia, so that was interesting. Um, I don't think I'm seeing anything. One last check. Uh, I bet. <laughs> ben, ben Peter Michael, I think, has been on every single Colts live stream that I've been a part of at least for a second. So I, we appreciate you, Ben. Ben gets a, uh, he gets an oatmeal cream pie or a Gatorade. Nice. Or both. Or both. You know, he's been on to everyone. So shout out to Ben. Uh, that, I think, I think that's good, Mike. Awesome. Well, Wait. thanks. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you soon. All right, I got to figure out how to end this thing now. <laughs> All right, yes. bye, Mike. See ya.